I don't know where I put my stylus, so I guess I'm writing my finger today. But a couple of people asked me about the distance review uh, reveal from a couple of days ago. And it kind of looked like in the homework, we were still having trouble with distance. So I just wanted to go over a couple of them. Um, let's look at this one first. Remember distance formula is that face. So we've got a face, we've got eyes, we've got a nose, we've got eyelashes, and sadly we're in math class. So we're going to put negative signs there or subtraction signs. So if I take my first point, that 4, 10, the 4 is the X and the 10 is the Y. So they have to go together. Doesn't matter if you put them first or second. And then you take the next set and we're going to do 10 and I do negative 1. So when I'm subtracting a negative 1, we've got to turn that into an add. Then you're just going to go through and solve it. So 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Make sure you put that negative in parentheses. If you forget to put it in parentheses, your calculator is going to do some weird things that you don't have planned. And then 10 plus 1 is 11. And then negative 6 squared is going to be 36. And 11 squared is 121. And then we get the square root of 157. So what happened down here in the answer? What did I do wrong? What did I, the last step that I forgot to do? Somebody unmute themselves. We forgot to take the square root, right? This distance down here, we need to put the square root of 157 in the calculator, and that's going to be mm, somewhere close to 15, 15 point, I don't know what. Okay, so always remember to take that square root. Let's do one more just to be sure. Anybody have one that they'd like to do? And give a shout out. shout out. Number two, column two, number one, or column two, number two? Column two, number two. Okay, so this guy right here. Okay, so again, we're going to do the face, parentheses, plus, parentheses, squared, squared, minus, minus. I always set that up first just so I don't make any crazy mistakes. Then I'm going to take that first point, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2. So I keep my negative there because it's the first number that I put in. And then I take this next one, negative 1 and negative 7. So when I do negative 1, that's going to turn into a plus 1. When I do the negative 7, it's going to turn into a plus 7. So then don't forget that square root house, that face. Five, 4 plus 1 is 5, so we've got 5 squared. And then negative 2 plus 7 is also 5, 5 squared. You can put those in parentheses if you want, but really it's more important to put the negatives in parentheses, kind of like you're giving them a hug, making them feel not negative anymore. You can all use that in today's society. And then we've got the square root of 50. So same problem here. We just forgot to take the square root. Square root of 50 is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 point something, like 7.05 or 7.1, something like that. But basically 7 point something. So I think this person here was having a hard time just remembering to take the square root at the end. And that's a super common mistake. Like I've said, there's a lot of little details in all of these problems, and you get one little detail wrong in the whole thing. All your good hard work goes for naught, right? Any other ones we need to look at? I don't want to rush through, but I do want to get to, today, to, to, to today's lesson. I'm having a hard time talking today. I wonder if I scroll up, if this will just scroll up with me. Let's see. Sweet, it does. All right. So, oh, I didn't copy something right. Can somebody look at number five on the quiz and see what that first X is? Because clearly I did not copy that A correctly. Somebody go over to the quiz number five and see what that number should be. This time we'll take this one first while we're waiting.
the home equipment on the slide when we um I think it was just the quiz, like this the sixth question one. Okay. Um is it a one? Um on five. What do you need now? What's the first X value? What's the point for A? Negative something seven. A, A, it's saying A is located at three, negative two. Oh. Hello? Yeah, I think. Are you on the sixth question one? Not for today, from yesterday. No, it's not. It's, yeah, th three, it's three? Okay, so no. I'm just. Oh, this is question three. That's my problem. That one? Negative three, negative eight. Oh, they might be. So that's a zero. Uh-huh. Zero seven. Okay, so I need to put a zero in here. So if I have A at zero seven and B at five seven, thank you for everyone who tried to research that for us to fix my mistake. Then I put in the five seven. This time I put in the second um, point as the X one and Y one, and that's fine. So we're going to take this square root and we get five minus zero is five and seven minus seven is zero. Zero squared is zero, so we get square root of 25, which equals five. And I think the most missed answer was 25. The most common mistake on these distance formula questions is you just forget the very last step, which is take the square root, okay? So somewhere on the sticky side of your brain, stick the fact that when you do distance formula, you have to take the square root. Even if you use Pythagorean theorem, like on a graph, you still have to take the square root at the end. Okay, so let's look at the next one because that was kind of what we were doing yesterday. And I think this problem is just maybe a little, like it's got an extra step or something. If you don't have a picture, you always want to draw a picture. This one did have a picture. I think it had PR kind of going like this. So we had P and R. Line N bisects it. So this is the knife that's cutting PR. So that's the knife and PR has been cut in half at point Q. So the left side and the right side are congruent. If PQ equals 3Y, so that's one of the halves, and PR, which is the total, equals 42, that's a total. If I'm given a half and a total, then I need to use the formula, the half plus the half, equals the total. So 3y plus 3y equals 42. And then you combine your like terms. So 3y and 3y is 6y equals 42. Therefore, y equals 7. A lot of people put 7 in. Why is 7 the correct answer? Yeah. Is not asking us for anything else. The tricky part was this side is 3y and this part is 3y. So you have to add them up. Questions on that? I like questions, just FYI. In the next question, number two in the homework, that was the next kind of low question. It gave you a whole bunch of angles that you needed to look at. So I thought I made this bigger, but I think one of the answer choices was DAB. So angle DAB, that middle angle is your vertex. That middle letter is your vertex. And a lot of people just aren't reading the, the angles correctly. DBC, DBC, the B is your vertex. And then let me get another color. We've got D, B, A, and the B is the vertex. 
and we'll do one more. Uh, let's do green. Uh, and then we've got DCB, DCB, and B is the vertex of that angle. Which of those two angles are congruent? The dark blue one, the pink one, the light blue one, or the green? Which two angles are congruent? Anybody? Which two angles are exactly the same size? There's two sets of them. DBA is acute, right? Over here would be A. And DCB is acute. So those two are congruent. And then what other set is are congruent? Because they've got those right angles in them. I don't know if I can make a right angle sign in there. It's too small. So DBC and DBA are both right angles, correct? They form a straight line. So if the one on the right is right, then the one on the left is right. Let me say that with 90 degrees because that makes more sense. DBC is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. DBA is also a right angle because they have to add up to 180, and we're going to kind of reinforce that today. Okay, so that was a hard question. We hadn't really looked at anything like that. That's always kind of a low question on that homework assignment. Um, what do I do in number six? What's the process here if I have a graph? You've got two choices. Anybody? Did you make a triangle? If I want to find the distance between those endpoints, one of the easiest things to do is make a triangle. And then you just measure the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, and measure the height, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what do I do with the five and the six? This was from day four. Pythagorean theorem. So five squared plus six squared equals C squared. It's exactly what we were doing with the face. In order to get rid of that power, you need to take the square root of both sides because when you take the square root and you have a power, they go away. So then I've got the square root of 25 plus 36 or the square root of 50, 61. Make sure you take that square root. So in your calculator, you need to do square root 61, enter. And then I think you had to round to the nearest decimal place. Questions on any of that, ladies and gentlemen? No? Okay. What I want you to do is make sure you have your notebook open. And I want you to go to page 17. On page 17, last night you were supposed to watch a video on page 16. So we should know what vertical angles are. Vertical angles are across an intersection from each other. So if one is an acute angle, two is an acute angle, and they're both going to be what? Which of these words can I use for the vertical angles? Are they complementary? They add up to 90 degrees. They're supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. They're a linear pair. Together, they make a perfectly straight line or they're congruent, they're exactly the same size because they're both acute. Did we watch the video last night? So we've got vertical angles are congruent. Can I share my, would it be better if I didn't share my screen and we talked through it? 